Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the chassis assembly here. So I'm going to move on to the back end here and get all this kind of stuff put together. Um, and you know, one thing I thought I've, I keep forgetting to do in these videos is I meant to tell you what parts I'm using. Um, and I did have uh, one of you guys ask, you know, what front disc brake kit I'm using. And so that is actually a classic performance parts kit. And I don't know, I'll read you off the number. I took a picture of it just so I could remember. But it is uh, part 5557 SWBK D12. So if you Google that, I think uh, Woody's has it, uh, CPP has it. That's a pretty common kit. So it's a 12 inch disc brake setup with two inch drop spindles. So if you want any information on that, um, just check that out. Uh, the upper and lower control arms are new also. I was going to rebuild them, but I decided just to buy some new ones. The, the lowers are just stock control arms. The uppers do have the uh, added 5 degrees of caster in it because I'm going to have power steering on this. And like my 55 there, I have uh, stock control arms on that. It's got power steering. But I the best I could get is like 0 degrees caster, so I never really have like the way it's steered, really between that and the 605 box. I'm hoping this one steers a lot better. Um, but yeah, so back here, this is basically all just stock stuff. You know, it's the stock 336 open rear end, um, out of the 57. Uh, I put brand new uh, centric wheel bearings on it, or uh, axle bearings, I should say. Um, I didn't do anything with the rear diff. I just cleaned it up. The bearings seem like they're pretty tight. The gears don't seem excessively worn or anything like that. Um, I'm going to put a 2-inch lowering kit in it from Autocraft, a uh, lowering block kit. Um, the shackles are a shackle kit that came from Classic Performance Parts also. They come with two sets of bushings. They have the rubber and the neoprene. I've never used the neoprene, but I'm going to try them this time. Um, I'm going to remember to grease them this time because I never do that. I always forget, and then they always squeak on me. Um, and the other thing, I have brand new five leaf leaf springs because wagons typically use a five leaf spring and I thought I had some here because uh, I got a couple of brand new sets of leaf springs but uh, I couldn't get the, the bolts that were, uh, that were froze up in the eyelets of the old springs and they were pretty kind of rough so I just cut them and then I realized after the fact that all I had was four leaves. So usually like station wagons and convertibles, stuff like that, used a five leaf. So I went ahead and just ordered a new set of those also. So basically everything new suspension wise, or I should say everything suspension wise on this will be new. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting this together. Um, I got all the brand new brake stuff, I'll be assembling that too. So let me, I'm going to start hanging some springs and we'll see if we can't get this rear end put together. Alright, so here's another thing I was going to show you. So if you guys do buy new shackles or new shackle bushings when you're putting these together, um, make sure you get the right shackle kit for your, your car. So 55 shackles are all by themselves. See how they're the same width, top and bottom? 56 and 57 change to this style shackle. So the upper spring hanger or shackle hanger is a lot wider on a 56 and a 57. So that's an easy way to tell a 55 frame also, is if you're looking at it and the top spring here is narrow, that's an easy way to tell it's 55, 56 and 57, or 56 and 57 are obviously wider, but uh, I don't think I have a frame around here I could show you, but uh, you can see the, how the width difference there. So you should be able to spot it, you know, just by looking at it. Okay, and remember when you're putting your shackles in, the C-shape faces backwards and your nuts face out. So there is a left and a right to these shackles. So just keep that in mind, the shackle sits just like that. So when it compresses, it moves backwards like this.
All right, there's one side. Now let's move on to the next side. All right, all the the spring hang or springs in it are in the axle tubes in shackles. So now they're going to move on to putting the uh, center section in. Uh, but before I do that, I think I'm going to take a die and run across these studs. There was, you know, those are the original ones, and they usually get pretty cheesy and coated with paint and stuff. So I usually like to clean them up. It makes the or copper notes go on a lot easier. And then the other thing I was going to say is, so there's your gasket for that. And what I always recommend doing, because, you know, I used to just put the center section in with that gasket, but it seems like every single time I do that, it leaks. So what I usually do is I put a bead of sealer around both sides, just a little bit, and then just wipe off the excess when you when it squishes down and it seems to work and you don't get little spots in your driveway because it never leaked bad but it still dripped a little bit so I'm gonna get that in and we'll get the axle tubes in or the axles and the axle tubes and then the rear end will be pretty much all put together other than the brakes so we're pretty much home free the other thing I have to do yet is these lowering blocks well, you can see how close to the ground I am, so I just kind of snugged them as much as I could with the wrench. And after I can get the thing up in the air a little bit, get a floor jack underneath it, I'll uh, cut the excess length of the U-bolts off and tighten them up with the impact. And then those, I still, I'm, I'm still kind of riding the fence on these uh, two-inch spacers. So my 55 there had them. I put them in there, and this thing would bottom out over every bump and that thing had brand new springs also but i'm pretty sure that when i bought those springs years ago i think i got lowered springs so they had a little bit uh arch taken out of them so i actually think that was probably lowered about four inches in the back and i mean look nice but uh i ended up having to take them out it hasn't bottomed out yet so we'll see what these ones do when i actually get this thing on the road Okay, it's a couple days later guys, it's Sunday morning. Uh, I didn't get a chance to get out here and finish this video, so I'm gonna do that now, and then we're gonna work on, I think I'm gonna make a little bit longer video today. But just showing, we, showing you what we got done here. So the rear end is pretty well all together. So got the center section in, the axles in. Now I just gotta work on, uh, I gotta go pick up some bolts to put the uh, wheel cylinders in, then I can put the rest of the brakes together. And, Actually, I happen to have a, a new old stock e-brake cable sitting around here, so I got that in. So, so that's pretty much the plans, I think. Uh, I'm going to get changed in some nastier clothes so I don't ruin them, <laughs> or ruin these. And I'm going to go out there. We're going to push the delivery out on the rotisserie. i got to get my, they're kind of like off-road wheel or tires. They roll through the sand and the grass and gravel and all that a lot better, so... I'm going to go out there and get that all ready to go, and then we'll see what the bottom side of the car looks like in the sun. So, we'll just get that done now. Okay, the body's out of the garage, up on the rotisserie, up on its side. So, I'll give you a little glimpse of the bottom here. So, now the big or task is to sandblast all of this. So, I can finish up the welding here. I got to put that pan in yet. I got a few small spots like that I got to fix. And I got to do the inner rocker on this side. Um, but one thing I'm going to show you here is, you know, a lot of these cars had undercoating on them. Like this one, this one doesn't have very much. A lot of it just, you know, peels off like that. Um, but what I'm going to show you is how I get this stuff off. Now I've tried a lot of different ways and I've tried sandblasting it. It takes forever. I've tried using the grinder. It just clogs up your sanding disc or whatever. Um, the easiest way I found is if you just take a propane torch and a scraper, it comes right off. So I'll give you, a, I'll show you how I'm, I'm going to do that here in a second. All right, so you can see here, this is all that undercoating I'm talking about. You know, a lot of it's pretty thin. You can just scrape off, but it's when, when it's thicker like this. I mean, you can see it's. I mean, if you really get into it, you can get it pretty easy. But if you use a torch, I mean, you don't want to go crazy because you just want to heat it up a little bit. You don't want to warp the metal. But I mean, if you just heat it up a little bit, scrapes right off. You 
save yourself a lot of aggravation. Because if you tried to sandblast this, you'd be standing there doing it all day. Anyway, that's my method. All right, we got the majority of the thick stuff scraped off. So you see how clean that metal is, so that should blast up real clean. So I'm gonna throw the hood on. I might put this on time lapse, and we'll see how well it cleans up. for a few hours and it's not bad I'm running into a few pinholes here and there this I already knew was there I'm gonna have to fix but I do have quite a few pinholes in the uh, spare tire well but I don't really want to cut this whole thing out so I have a fix for that I think I'm gonna do um, I don't know if you've ever guys have ever used pour 15 but they have another product called pour patch and it's like a real thick pour 15 and you can fill in little pinholes like that. What I usually do is I take like a piece of uh, like masking tape and I put over the hole. I mean, it, I only do it real for real small ones. Um, fill in level where the inside pit, because usually these, these holes are from the inside out. Um, and if you fill them up and then sand them down, you'll never know they're there. But the uh, rest of it's actually looking pretty decent. Like I say, there's a few small pinholes back here. And obviously I gotta change that pan and stuff, but now I gotta roll it down the other way. Roll it on the other side because I am too short to reach the top, so. That is the next step. All right, there's what we ended up with today. It's quite a few hours of sandblasting. And here's where I'm gonna try to fill the pinholes. So they're just little small holes that, where did that go? Right here. So this is what I use to fill those little holes. It's a, it's a real thick version of pour 15. It's almost like toothpaste. So you just, what I do is I just put some blue masking tape there and just fill in the pit from the inside. So if you look here, you can see all them pinholes. And then you just uh, smear that in there and sand it down, and it makes it just like new. It'll never rot out in my lifetime anyway, so I hope. <laughs> uh, you know, is it the right way to do it? Probably not, but it's for me it's good enough. So it'll be nice and solid. Nobody will know the difference. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, guys, that's going to about cut it for me today. Uh, I'm filthy, so it's time for a quick shower and some dinner. Get ready for work tomorrow. Uh, one last thing though before I go. I know a while back I was kind of showing you some of the special moldings in that window delivery that I'm working on. And I showed you the plastic corner moldings and I showed you the uh, little wooden piece that goes behind them. I said I was going to try to reproduce them on my 3D printer. Well, I actually was able to sit down and here is the original. 
and here is a 3D printed version. You can see here, this is the Tinkercad program I use. It's all free open source. So if you ever want to try your hand at something like this, this is the uh, website I recommend. Um, so yeah, just a neat little uh, thing that we can make what, 70 years later that uh, nobody re reproduces <laughs> until now. So anyways, guys, I appreciate it. Uh, there's been a lot of new subscribers lately, and I really appreciate you guys. And one other thing, I think we're getting, I think we're sitting at around 600 and maybe 20 subscribers. Uh, I think I've decided that at 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a $100 gift card to like Jags or Summit or Woody's or somebody like that. So uh, keep that in mind. So like and subscribe, and we'll kind of keep track of how many subscribers we have. So if you like and subscribe, and then once we get to that 1,000 viewers, we'll do a drawing, and you got to be a subscriber to win, and we'll uh, see how fast we get there. So I uh, appreciate it, guys. Have a good night. Remember, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.